Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about the overview of Cliff Studio Paint 1.11.1 New Features, Updates and Improvements, presented by our dear artist Sarah Jin Chang, also known as the one with Bear. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quinones, myself, Joanna Brower, and Sarjin Chang. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time or have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready-to-publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash and and graphicsly.com. We also want to remind you that we'll share your Instagram stories if you tag us. Just mark us as hashtag webinar at the one with bear, at graphicsly, at welcome, and at Clip Studio official. Sarah Jin Shang, also known as the one with Bear, is a freelance illustrator who specializes in a wide range of mediums, including both digital and traditional. She streams live on Twitch and has built a community for her many aspiring artists with which uh, she shares her learnings and paintings process. Her art is heavily inspired by Eastern culture and fashion, and her digital art style is influenced by her passion in traditional art. I will leave you with Sarah Jean and her presentation, Overview of Cliff Studio Paint 1.11.1, New Features, Updates and Improvements. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Mario, for that awesome introduction. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out to attending. Uh, just give me one second. I am going to share my screen real quick. All right. Uh, you should be able to see my screen. Now let me quickly introduce myself a little bit. I am the one with Bear, uh, Sarah Jane Chong. I usually have the one with Bear as my name on all social media. And I do a lot of different styles, including line art, painting. And I also do traditional art, such as watercolor or acrylic paint. So um, my style really kind of goes in all kinds of directions, which is really awesome for uh, me to just experiment with different setups, uh, different mediums. So uh, without further ado, I do want to go a little bit over what I want to talk about today. So today we are covering Clip Studio Paint Update 1.11.0. <laughs> Hopefully you're saying all the numbers right. You know, numbers are not my strongest suit. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward update, a lot of quality of life improvements, uh, but the one that I really want to focus the most on is the brush engine improvement because this particular brush engine uh, feature really kind of helps me bring the type of brushes that I want to create to life. So I'm super, super excited about it, but at the same time, I'm going to put this to the last bit of what I'm going to be talking about today because I'm evil like that. <laughs> but well, it's really just because uh, the other ones are pretty straightforward. And so we can probably get through them relatively quickly. And then we can spend a little bit more time on the brushes in terms, uh, in case you have any questions, uh, either during the presentation or that you already have these questions. Uh, when you were reading the update information, please remember to put them in the Q&A session so that we can uh, get to you uh, after the presentation is over. Now, but without further ado, let's do this. Uh, the first 
bit of presentation is fairly straightforward. This one is the Mac OS Move and Resize Frames. Uh, this one is a lot of my friends who are on Mac uh, have been telling me that this finally allows them to use the dual monitor without any issue. Now you do have to manually enable it. You have to go to your preference, interface, workspace, and then turn on use application frame. So I repeat that it is preference, interface, workspace, and turn on use application frame inside the uh, your uh, inside your preferences here. Now, because I am not on a Mac, so unfortunately I cannot uh, show you what it looks like on the Mac OS, but at the same time, it basically allows you to move uh, your boxes like this and you can move it back. I did not realize that this was not available on Mac before, so I, I was just really happy for all of the people using <laughs> using Clip Studio Paint on the Mac OS because this is uh, a game changer. Like, I don't know how I would be able to do it without it. Um, so after you move all of your stuff, just always remember to go to your workspace and register your workspace. So that is the first part. The second part is a file size reduction. Uh, give me one second. So, this particular uh, setup is actually fairly interesting because in the past, uh, all of your file information, including your layers, your uh, vector information, they're all saved natively within the file. Uh, this would increase the file size and the original intention for that was to uh, speed up the performance inside the file. But after a lot of testing, we realized that uh, the, the increase was actually marginal. So, so what would really benefit would be to store all of the layer information in a cache file separately from your native file. Now, this is really great because for somebody like myself, uh, I have my desktop files and then I also have my tablet that I bring my Samsung tab S7 plus yes there <laughs> I always try to remember the name of that uh, so I actually move my file between the cloud save pretty often so in um, in order to save the file size this is actually a pretty big deal for me because I move them so constantly. I'll give you an example of one of the files that I resaved. Uh, I'll show you uh, how to do this. So if you have an existing file that you didn't open or didn't save prior to your Clip Studio, uh, prior to this particular update, you can, up, you can open any older file. Uh, this one currently, I'll open this one as an example. It is 1.75 gig gigabyte <laughs> gigabytes. I'm just going to say GB. <laughs> 1.75. Okay, you can remember that. Uh, so let's open that. So what you will have to do to reduce your file size is you have to save it again. Um, I actually tested it out on my other file before and that one saved about uh it, it went from 1.64 to 88885 megabytes so i think the margin is anywhere between 40 percent to 60 percent now the more layers that you have the more potentially it will save um, but I, I'm going to go over a little bit more detail in just a little bit. So I'm just going to, I don't know if this is necessary, but I just uh, disable it and then enable the layer again, just so I can save it. So let me just save that real quick. It's going to take a little bit of time. Now, if you have time lapse saved within your file, if you have time lapse enabled for your file, 
your saving would be smaller just because the majority of your file size is actually contributing to the time lapse itself. Like for example, I have another file that was like seven gigabyte or something because it was a really massive painting and I spent more than 20 hours on it. Um, I noticed that the, the saving on that was, I think it saved about one gig on that particular file just because you know the, the majority of it contributed to the 20 hours worth of time lapse so just keep in mind uh, everybody's experience is going to be different but uh, from my finding in my past files it's about 40 to 60 percent so let's take a look at this one it's still saving come on now pc Okay, so that was what, 1.71? I already forgot, oh no. <laughs> okay, there you go, 1.71, and now it's down to 1.12. So 1.12, I don't know if you can see really clearly because the text is so small, uh, but I would say 1.71 down to 1.12 gigabyte is pretty good. Um, but like I said, I do have quite a significant amount of uh, layers in this particular file. Um, so, but regardless, it is still saving me a pretty tremendous amount. So I'm fairly happy with that. Um, but speaking of time lapse that I just mentioned earlier, uh, the new function is to be able to include a logo of Clip Studio Paint when you're exporting your time lapse. So uh, how you can do that is when you go to export, <clears throat> where is it? So time lapse and then export. This would bring up the export uh, little window. And then on the bottom right, it will say show Clip Studio Paint logo. And then it will show a real nice little uh, shadow background uh, logo on the upper right. Now, I really love this feature because I constantly get people asking me, uh, what software do you use when I export my time lapse or when I post my images? So the fact that there is this option to include a logo is really suitable for me, um, just so it's really clear what software I used. Um, and But if you don't want it, you can simply not have it toggled. It's entirely optional. Uh, so I really, really like the inclusion of it. Maybe, hopefully, I'm personally hoping that in the future we can also include our own watermark. That would be awesome. <laughs> um, so that is the optional Clip Studio Paint logo on your time lapse. Uh, the next one is merge non-consecutive selected layers. In order to demonstrate this, I drew you the best burger you will ever see. That's, I don't know why. I had two burgers that day, and I think that's probably where the inspiration came from. Uh, so on the, uh, on the bottom right, um, I had all of the different ingredients on a different layer. So you can see top bun, uh, lettuce, pickles, bacon, cheese, patty, and bottom bun. So in the past, you would have to move uh, the layers together <clears throat> and, and put them consecutively one after another in order to merge them. Um, but now if you click on, for example, let's select uh, top bun, lettuce, we gotta have pickles. So we're going to skip over bacon and we'll have cheese, patty, and bottom bun. Uh, and this would, you know, break up, it will make it non-consecutive. And then you simply click on the right and say merge selected layers. So now you can see that the layer, the bacon is uh, left out and then the, the burger has been assembled uh, and moved to the top. And this one is now merged. So this is actually really awesome. I gotta say, I have never realized how inconvenient it was in the past. 
<laughs> because I just kind of like took it as the way it was. And then I, I would always kind of like move all of the layers I needed to merge into the same folder um, and then merge it that way. But that was really just an extra step uh, and always kind of annoying. So the fact that they are uh, now this being a function, now you can merge as well as converting. If you need to convert a bunch of line art into vector or converting a bunch of your vector line art to raster, you can also do that non-consecutively as well. Now, this also applies to folder. For example, if I put uh, if I put the top three parts into one folder, okay, and then the bottom three parts into the same folder, I can also select the two non-consecutive folders and then right click and merge selected layer like that. So again, the poor bacon is still left out. You guys can have it, I won't have it. Thank <laughs> you. All right, so that is the merge and uh, non-consecutive layers feature. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm a little under the weather. Hmm. All right, the next part is gesture. I cannot show you this, unfortunately, because um, I don't have a touch screen control, um, but basically what happens is they have included a new way to <clears throat> to do your gestures. Uh, how you can enable that is go under File, Preferences. Now, when you go under the touch gesture, there is a press and tap, um, but more and more people who use Procreate really enjoy the how intuitive it is to use your finger to control a lot of things in Procreate. Uh, so in order to make things a little bit more intuitive and also comfortable for people to use, uh, Clip Studio Paint introduced this feature. Now, in order to change this press and tab, what you have to do is you have to go into gesture configuration. You have to change to Clip Studio Paint gestures instead of window gestures. So do this part first. Uh, change it to Clip Studio Paint Gesture, go back to Touch Gesture. You will notice that the press and tap change back to three finger tap. And now you can use the three fingers just like how you would in Procreate uh, to rotate, scale, and zoom. I think zoom in as well. Um, but like I said, I don't have a touch screen uh, Cintiq and therefore I am unable to really show you guys how this works. If you want more information, they do have, um, they do have um, something on their YouTube for you, for you to look at how it works. Okay, so that is the touch gesture improvement. The next bit is the notification, and notification is for the people who are on mobile, and this is including Android, ser uh, Android service or uh, iOS. So basically the mobile push notifications, you can enable this now. And if you have any sale in your Clip Studio Paint, uh, Clip Studio Asset Store, you would get a notification now. So uh, this can be enabled when you start a Clip, Clip Studio Paint uh, inside your mobile devices, or you can just manually enable it in your settings. Again, because I uh, don't have one handy right now, as well as the camera view, so I cannot show you uh, how it would look. <laughs> and also, probably I won't be getting a notification when the time actually matters. So, <laughs> so uh, this is this is just for your convenience. All right, so. Now we can get into the meat of today's uh, webinar, which is the brush engine. And hopefully the previous parts are all fairly straightforward and clear and understandable. Uh, but again, if you have any question regarding any of those updates, please feel free to still ask about them and Joanna and I will uh, do our best uh, to help answer them at the, uh, at the end of the webinar. Okay, so I do encourage you to start your Clip Studio Paint 
uh, right now, if you're just kind of watching this on the side or if you're drawing with me, uh, I would uh, encourage you to, uh, to open your Clip Studio Paint just so you can kind of see how things uh, work in real time on your own, own services, uh, on your own systems, because I think that is always the best way for me to understand how a brush works. And plus, you will be able to see how they interact a lot better, a lot clearer than uh, compared to on my screen. OK, so today we are going to talk about color mixing smear. The smear function is a color mixing feature. So this is the color mixing feature that has just been added into into one of the options before we had a uh, blend as well as running color and now the smear is the third option uh, to the right so this is under ink color mixing so this smear feature is introduced to improve or enhance the last update where we had introduced the brush shape so the dual brush um, once you enable the, the dual brush, actually, let's not jump ahead. Uh, basically, Smear is going to be able to accommodate dual brush unlike the other two. So one of uh, the core differences between uh, Smear and also the previous two is that Smear, when Smear is enabled, you can still use blending mode. Okay, so if I like, if you look at this, um, if I switch to blend, you will see blending mode is now grayed out. Same thing with um, running color. So these two blending mode cannot work with them. But when you enable smear, you can have blending mode uh, still accessible to you. Another thing that is still accessible is your opacity dynamics. <clears throat> um, if I, here, let's see. If I go into here, blend or running color, your opacity dynamics is also grayed out. You cannot click on it. Uh, this will basically lock your opacity to whatever you have set over here, uh, but it cannot be controlled by pen pressure, et cetera, et cetera. So smear allows um, the opacity dynamics to be used as well as blending mode. Um, so I am going to show you even if i'm not changing anything on here i'm going to show you how it looks um even without these uh even even without changing any of those so the core difference is hold on let me turn those off for now and i'm going to uh draw a few strips and i will show you how the colors interact I always encourage you to kind of play around with these brushes uh, in real time, just, just so you can understand how they interact a little bit better. But for the first one, normal, I'm going to draw another strip on top of it. So this is the round watercolor brush by default uh, in Clip Studio Paint under the realistic watercolor. So you should all have this brush um, called the round watercolor brush. So right now this is no color mixing and I just put down a pink color as well as a darker blue color and you can see it just goes on top sort of let me um, actually turn my pointer focus off. I don't know if the yellow thing is a little too distracting but you know, actually, let me leave that on just so you can see the interface a little bit clearer. Um, but you can see, like, they basically just multiply on top of it. There is no blending going on in between. And that's because the blending mode is set to multiply at the moment. Okay, so the second strip. Let me move. Actually, let me move this over here just so you can see the text. Okay. Um, there you go. All right. So the second strip, we are going to enable color mixing and we're going to choose blend. Now we're going to see how the color interacts. See the beginning of it? It sort of blends in a little bit. 
right now it blends in a little bit and then the watercolor edges sort of disappear and uh, but the pink color doesn't really bleed into um, the blue color so this is kind of I, I don't I don't totally know how to describe it in a very technical term because as an artist, I always go by feel, <laughs> right? Like if we're going to go into really scientific color theory, I don't know any of that. <laughs> I, I will admit it right now. Um, but you can clearly see the differences between the two. One has a very distinctive edge. The other one sort of softens it um, and then interacts with the two a little bit more. And then the second one is the running color. So you will see that the second one uh, is also similar to, uh, sorry, the running color is also similar to blend where the edge disappear and they kind of merge together a little bit better. Uh, but at the same time, it also loses, um, oh, sorry, it also maintains that uh, saturation of the color. Um, so it shows up a little bit stronger than the blend. So depending on your need for your painting and the kind of effect that you want, I always encourage you to like toggle between the different ones and just see which one works out to be a little bit better for you. Um, but running color in general will maintain their uh, hue. They will maintain their hue and their saturation uh, when you, but also kind of uh still merge with the bottom color okay so now we are going to take a look at smear okay so you can see that smear actually included uh it's not super 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 obvious right here just because we're using a relatively uh transparent uh, brush but you can clearly see that over here uh, where the blue first overlay on top of the pink, it has become very transparent because it's trying to blend it together. And then you can also see the starting, once the blue leaves the pink, um, it has that sort of, it has the sort of more transparency to it. Now, the reason for this, you will see it in the latter sample, is because it actually is dragging the pink into the blue. Uh, but because this is a very transparent color, it is harder to see. Um, but you will see that it also includes, it also still maintains uh, the watercolor edges. It is because it's maintaining the opacity of, um, of the brushes in its original shape. So the three has a very different distinctive look. Uh, one loses the edge, another loses the edge, but maintains the hue and saturation. And then this one, is a full blend but still maintaining the um, original shape and the setting of the brush so i'm going to put uh, just another color on top of it just to see if we can get a different effect let's go back to no color mixing okay so that's the orange and we would do a blend okay that's also blending Okay, also blending, but more saturated orange is shown. Okay, and this one you can see that it's also the same behavior. Uh, the beginning is blending, but you still see a little bit of orange blend, uh, combining with the blue. And the beginning of the stroke is uh, a little bit lessened in terms of their color. Okay, so I'm going to use the second example. And this one is going to be my own personal brush. <clears throat> oh, actually, let me put down a pretty strong color first. So I'm going to put down four strip of whatever color this is. I don't have a fancy name. <laughs> I don't know any fancy name for colors. Usually people have like, um, you know, fancy name like flamingo pink or, I don't know, wine red. For me, it's just like, oh, purplish blue. <laughs> so I am going to use another more obvious color. Let's try uh, pink, and, pink and white. 
and see what happens. Now, the first one is normal. We'll put down a strip. So this particular brush, if you look at the brush tip, I <clears throat> see that it is dual colored. Oh, uh, sorry, you can't really see. Let me enlarge that so you can see a little bit more. So the brush tip has black and white. And for those who are not super familiar with brush design, uh, black and white basically represent the main color as well as the sub color. So this particular brush would adapt the main color, which is pink, and then the sub color, which is white. Um, so if you're designing a brush and then you design it with a tip that has black and white, it basically uh, inherently combines the two colors, depending on how you design the brush. All right, let me decrease that. So uh, currently this one is without any blending and it's just a strip of uh, pink and white on top of that. But it's somewhat transparent, so you are kind of seeing the, uh, the background color showing through. Now we're going to enable color mixing. So one of the key differences uh, that you would see later on. But color mixing, especially blended and running color, doesn't technically adapt uh, the two colors separately. So what they're doing is they're actually combining them inherently. So you can see like this one with the white and the pink, the white basically disappears, but the beginning it is trying to blend with uh, the blue, the purplish, I'm just going to, we can call it blue. I don't know. You might have a different interpretation of this color. You're not colorblind, I can assure you. Um, so, but you can see in the beginning, it is still trying to blend the pink with the blue. Uh, at least it merges a lot better compared to the top one over here. We'll try the second one. The second one is the same. Uh, the second running color and the blend. Uh, you can see that the white and the pink has already been blended together um, even just within the brush stroke itself. So uh, again, just like before, the pink is showing up a lot more than the blend option. It's because it's maintaining its saturation and hue. So um, I think if you didn't really understand the differences between the two modes, this is kind of like the most basic way or the easiest way to explain this one is more saturated than the other is it technically correct i don't know but that's how i feel <laughs> and then when let's go to smear now you see in smear this is very interesting because in the smear color let me actually change to this oh actually no change it back uh, in the smear color, it is maintaining the white and the pink pretty distinctively. And that is because smear, as opposed to the other two, uh, the other two blending modes, smear is capable of um, telling your main color and the sub color within the same brush. So that's what it's making this brush so different than the, the other one before. Uh, than the previous two ones, you can use two colors within the same brush uh, while you're blending. Now, but the very beginning, uh, just like before, you can actually see that even though it is maintaining its shape pretty well, but it is actually dragging the bottom color into the current color. Uh, so, a lot further than the other two. So uh, even though you cannot see it from before, but um, this one, using the same exact uh, brush setting, you can see that this one, as well as the blend, are both attempting to drag the previous color into the current color, except that this one, uh, it, except that smear has the two tip colors separated. I feel like I said a lot of words, but <laughs> hopefully that was sort of clear. Um, if you're playing around with the uh, the brushes 
hopefully you can kind of see why they're different and how they're different. Now, the two brushes, again, if you're not super clear on what I just said, um, I know that I keep on repeating the same thing, but if you don't really know um, why they're different or want to see more example, please just put them in the Q&A and then we can go over them a little bit later. Now, let me actually turn these two off for now and put it over here. The two brushes that have been updated uh, to incorporate the smear feature are the wet wash as well as the thick oil paint. So thick oil paint and wet wash. If you want to re-download these brushes, they're not going to automatically uh, change your settings in your current brush set. So if you have these two brushes from your last update, you do have to manually download them again for this update, uh, just so the settings change. This is in case that you already made your own changes to the brushes and they don't want to overwrite that. So how you do that is go to the top left to your subtool palette and the little sandwich three bar menu. Go to add from default. And this one, you will want to find brush under watercolor. You want to find wet wash. Okay, that's the new one. And you press OK. And that will automatically add it into your palette. Now this one says wet wash three is because I've I've added it like multiple times. <laughs> so it will it won't uh it won't overwrite, but it will basically just save us another one. Um, and then you can just manually go back in and change their name later. And then app from default again. Um and on the brush thick paint this one is the thick oil paint okay thick oil paint there you go so these are the two new updated one uh, they do recommend that for the wet wash to work as intended so you can see that this one automatically has um, the color mixing turn on. Now you might ask, how come like you're looking at this one, but the blend and running color and the smear are all grayed out? Like how come you can't toggle these anymore, but I could before when I was doing the demonstration? This is because these two brushes have the secondary brush shape turned on. So the dual brush has been checked. Once the dual brush is checked, it will de default your color mixing to smear because smear is the only color mixing mode that is compatible with a dual brush. Okay, the other two are not. So it makes sense for you to not be able to toggle them to begin with. Um, so if, like you can see that right now, oh, uh, here, let's take a look at the right over here. You see the color mixing over here right now, it is all grayed out. But if I go into brush shape and I turn off do a brush, this will turn back on and then you can now toggle running color or blend. But as soon as you have the dual brush on, it will default to smear. So if you still want to use the color mixing uh, while you have dual color, this is why the smear introduction is so significant because uh, it is to accommodate your dual brush setting. Okay, uh, they do recommend that you can change the amount of paint uh, to below 30. So let's try for this one to have a stronger effect. So you can see now that has a really nice blended color. The color maintains um, the color maintains really, really saturated when you're trying to merge the other color into it. So remember, if you want uh, to kind of test out this brush with its intended purpose, remember to lower the paint to below 30. Now that is the wet wash. 
Now, we will do thick oil paint as well. Okay, so that is thick oil paint and I'm blending red and green because I don't know why. So now that can blend really, really beautifully. And the reason why this is really cool is because this particular brush also used the dual brush setting. And that is why you can see, like there are these strips um, of colors, like lighter, uh, darker, lighter, darker sort of uh, line going across the brush stroke to imitate the brush bristle. Uh, texture. Uh, that is thanks to the dual brush. If you have dual brush turned off, um, you actually won't really have that uh, texture anymore. It won't be as obvious. It's not as distinctive compared to before. So in order to have the dual brush turned on, uh, the smear color is, um, is really kind of a, a great introduction to the whole brush engine. And I will show you a brush that I am currently working on. Uh, I do still want to do a lot more changes to this, um, especially using my own texture as well as using my own tip, but just changing the setting a little bit. So right now I have color mixing uh, turned on with smear, uh, a dual brush, uh, a, a dual brush tip, and these really kind of gives me that beautiful color blend that I have been waiting for <laughs> for Clip Studio to introduce. So I'm super, super, super excited to see what people can come up with. Um, and I will show you a little bit of the settings that I have. Um, so hold on, let me take a look over here. Okay, so I have the color mixing Turn on, amount of paint is full. That's why they're so saturated. Right here. And then the blending mode changed to replace alpha. I cannot really explain in technical terms what replacing alpha means, but at the same time, the replace alpha is the only mode that in my opinion can create these kind of really really nice blend so if this is the the effect that you're going for remember to change the blending mode to replace alpha like if i was to place uh, if i was to change this to multiply then it'll have a different uh different look or hmm let's see what can we do uh let's try soft light i don't know what that would do okay that did that basically you know made my brush disappear <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there are just so many different things that you can try wow that's that's crazy um but i just really love the fact that the color mixing still allows you to change blending mode so now you have to you don't have to change the blending mode on your layer you can just change it on the brush and it's awesome and i love it and that is about it that's basically my understanding of the brush engine and if there's any question joanna we can help and answer yes uh we have some uh questions that for example because we did have the new update and i don't think it's always very easy to understand first of all where can people update the clip studio <laughs> it's a very <laughs> basic thing so okay. uh let me just uh, just say that really quick. Just go to the homepage, go to download, and then download the respective version for your device, either Mac or Windows, mm -hmm. in the shops in on Galaxy and uh, iPad and such. Uh, the update should come automatically if it's enabled. So, but yeah, that that's one thing. <laughs> Is that that's for the mobile version? They're not asking for a desktop. No, no, that's for all of them. Like on the homepage, you can find all of the updates mm -hmm. on just under downloads. Um, it's always the latest version. The, uh, the And then from there, you can go to each store depending on the mobile yeah. version. Yeah. So I, I go <laughs> by the I go by the the most um, basic way. I Google mm. Clip Studio Paint download <laughs> like 
<laughs> that's literally what I do. I literally Google Clip Studio Paint download and I click download. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that also that's works. That also works. But you you see the the wonderful uh, top bar, like the the top menu, and there it has this little download button, and this is exactly how you get there. So mm -hmm. it's all there. We just have to, you know, it's not like um, it's not updating on its own on Windows and Mac. So yeah, that's it does just it. Yeah. that's just an important side note here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah. We don't have that many questions. I think you explained everything wonderfully. Um, mm, thank you. But uh, because we had such, you showed such a large file at the beginning, people are a bit curious what your setup is that you can oh, have. My, file. my file think, size? Yeah, no, just your, your general uh, PC uh, tablet setup for drawing for you. Oh, um, so I am using a Wacom Cintiq Pro 24. Uh, and I also use a Clip Studio TabMate for my shortcuts. Mm -hmm. So the TabMate is honestly awesome. It's been really improving my workflow. Um, so I use it for line art as well as painting. Now my canvas size, on the other hand, let me actually show you my canvas. Um, I have a lot of different presets saved. So mm -hmm. A3 letter size, uh, four times six, which is a postcard or a big postcard. It really depends. Um, but I generally have like the the inches set over here. Uh, so I'll change the unit to inch and then just whatever inch that I'm thinking of printing out. Uh, so that will be my setup, the numbers over here. And then the resolution is always 300 for mm. myself. Yeah, yeah, so that is, and I always, uh, always have the paper color enabled. I also have the record time lapse uh, enabled, just so I don't forget. Um, yeah. Once you have this checked in your new file setup, it will always remain checked until you turn it off. Yeah, um, exactly. So Yeah, so this is really, really wonderful and really important mm -hmm. for me. You don't have to manually, like, open a new one, uh, like, open a new file, and then remember to like, oh, time lapse, record time lapse. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's also I think we probably covered this in the last one, but just because <laughs> of the file size that you mentioned today, um, so the re the time lapse recording is adding a lot of size to each file. Yes. And for people who have a bit of a problem with the files getting this big, you can essentially export your time lapse in chunks and reduce the file size again mm -hmm. after that by just disabling the function. So you start drawing, recording the time lapse, your file gets really big, you export the, the, the video, mm -hmm. then you turn off the time lapse and that will reduce the file size immediately, but it will also delete the time lapse data until that point. Mm -hmm. But you can turn it back on again and then you start from that point onward. So you have like smaller files for your videos and it will not be as taxing on um, on your system because the file size will just be incremental um, for, for each section that you record. I gotta say that's a great idea and yeah. I never thought of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've seen it because people struggle like with the setups and stuff and you know, if the file gets too big, just export the video and then start over, like just keep going <laughs> And drawing it just don't forget to turn on time lapse again <laughs> yeah and I it actually, really helps it really helps i i actually the way that i have personally been been doing it um but now that i'm listening to joanna i think joanna's way is actually better <laughs> but what i did was i would have my first file hmm. and then um so i would record all of the time lapse in that first file and then i start a new file I copy um, everything or copy the information from the first file and then paste them directly into the second file. Uh, and then yeah. in that yeah. way, yeah, in that way, it basically would generate a, a brand new file with a brand new time lapse. Uh, so mm. it's a little bit manageable, but all of these were still like eight gig or something because, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because this was a, a really large painting. It was, mm. it was, yeah. 
yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a bit tricky because there is a lot of information that's being saved in in the mm -hmm. time lapse. So, but yeah, it's and you can see it. I think we had like a, a file for a a while back that was like eleven gigabytes because of the time lapse, and then it was when it got reduced, it was like two hundred megabytes. So <laughs> there is quite a lot of information there. Yep, I can see that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see what else do we have. Oh, so someone wanted to know where to download the new brushes again because they missed it. Okay. No problem. Uh, so that would be under your. So once you select your brush, you would change. It would change it to the sub tool palette over here, and then you click on the little sandwich icon to the left, which is the three bar, and you go to add from default. This is how you would be adding all of the new Clip Studio Paint brushes uh, from the last update as well as this update. And then you go under brush, wet wash. So that is the first brush that you would be adding. And then under thick paint, thick oil paint. So these two, wet wash and thick oil paint. So that is just under the sandwich, uh, the sandwich menu, and then also add from default. Cool. I hope I hope that's understandable. I know they're also available on assets just for download, mm -hmm. so you can just like, go to the asset store and download the new setting. Yeah. Settings brushes, the brushes with the new settings. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Just in case. <laughs> um. All right, let's see. There are like some more general art questions mm -hmm. if yeah, you have it. Definitely. Um, just a general thing. How do you get over art block? I know that's a wide, ra wide ranging question, but do you have any <laughs> any quick tips on that one? That's that's always the thing. Um, I think art blocks when you are. When you are facing art blocks, usually what happens is that you have an expectation in your head or that you want to draw something that would surpass your past work. So you want to take one more step ahead, uh, one more step forward with your work and then feeling lost and not knowing what to do. Usually, usually that's how my art blocks come from. So I would face, um, a piece of canvas and not really sure where to start, how to start. Uh, I would recommend that when you're, you know, having these type of feelings, look up a reference. Like look up anything from Pinterest. Remember your favorite show. What kind of favorite show you're watching? Um, your favorite games. Take a screenshot of of those things and try to replicate the scene. So uh, this is what I, I think studying from references is usually what gets myself out of art blocks because I'm learning something and still working through something. And even though it is something that you would think that you may already know, you may still learn something from that experience of, rep uh, of recreating another scene. Uh, so. I think that's kind of what I do when I have absolutely no idea what to draw uh, or just feeling kind of stuck. Uh, I just pick up a picture that I really like or a screenshot of something that I really like and I try to work on that. Um, and that feeling of satisfaction may not contribute to my creativity but it's that satisfaction of getting something done or still working towards something that gets me out of that low, if that makes sense. <laughs> so once you get out of that low and then the creative, uh, you would make room for creativity because you're no longer feeling too down um, about your work, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I mean, that's like a wide topic. It but is. Yeah, this, it, this it, answer. Exactly. <laughs> and art blocks comes in a lot of different forms. Like some yeah. people are really just stuck on not knowing how to paint a particular thing. So mm -hmm. it, yeah, I, I my 
very general answer to a very general question is <laughs> to paint from reference. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, just, just start with something that's not like really close to you. So you don't really have to worry about. Yeah, exactly. I, exactly. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we are almost at the end. Um, but there was one question we we're looking at like the the big new features, which are just a few of the many, many features that Club Studio Paint has. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any recommendations or suggestions for people who are just starting out with Club Studio and they're looking at this and they're like, I don't even know where to find the eraser. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> do you have any, <laughs> any, any suggestions for that, how to just get started with Club Studio? Yeah, um, actually, Clip Studio uh, under Salsa's uh, uh, under Salsa's uh, own YouTube channel has a ton of really good, just bite-sized introduction to some of the features. Uh, I also did a webinar that is starting fresh in Clip Studio Paint that goes over the entire interface because I think one of the things that's the most intimidating is interface. Um, like when you come in and actually, I don't know if Mario is able to find uh, that particular webinar that has the introduction to uh, to Clip Studio um, and then post it in chat probably. Yeah. Um, but that one, so when you first come into Clip Studio, it will probably look something like this. No, actually, I, I don't think that's the right one. But regardless, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, reset, I reset to default. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh -oh. <laughs> It'll look like this. And yes. I did a webinar and tried to go over uh, what every icon means. Now, even if that is uh, really confusing, what I would recommend is just know three buttons. E for eraser, P for pen, B for brush. Um, so those are really kind of the three things that you should start with. Um, before you really understand all of these, um, you don't have to understand all of these other stuff that's that's happening, right? Um, so B for brush. P for pen. And then E for eraser. Wow, I don't know how to write. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then when you press by default, when you you were pressing B in the beginning, it will cycle through a, uh, some different tools such as decoration and airbrush, etc. If you keep pressing B, um, and then if you P if you're pressing P, then it will cycle through pencil and pen. Um, so these are really kind of the three main ones that, that can get you started. And then you can slowly move towards um, different ones. Uh, so I see that Mario has put it in the YouTube webinar playlist, yeah. uh, as well as the, the one that uh, that's from me, the new to Clip Studio Paint. I also did a series of um kind of like an introduction to some of the core uh, like the core features in clip studio such as comic books rulers uh, animation and brush engine vector layer etc uh, those are under the wacom's channel hmm. so yeah yeah and there are just so many more on Graphics channel and clip studio paints channel and yeah. wacom's channel so there are a ton of tutorials out there by now so mm -hmm. yeah and we yeah, have like great webinars too like everyone's yeah, exactly. like this one <laughs> <laughs> Aw, thank you <laughs> like, i think the webinars are really really great um a really great way for learning so Honestly, thank you guys all so much for coming out and also spending the time and wanting to learn. That really means a lot to us because I think it's just the general confusion sometimes with features and where to get certain things can really discourage people uh, from wanting to try new things. So the fact that you guys are willing to come out and learn something new 
and hopefully like spread it to your friends who are confused. That's always uh, really, really, really helpful. So, mm -hmm. but if you have any more specific question, please feel free to send me a message on Instagram or on Twitter or on DeviantArt. Um, and yeah, I will be happy to help. Yeah, perfect. Okay. I think that is just about a good time to stop and a good point to stop on. Yeah. Or unless you have anything else, but I think I think we've got everything so far. Yeah, we'll we did. Probably have, <laughs> have the opportunity to talk more about it in a different webinar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yep, so thank you so much, Joanna. Thank you so much, Sarah Jean. Thank you. Uh, this has been a, another great webinar, and thank you all of the attendees. We know this was a little bit more technical, but we're so glad that you guys were so interested during the whole presentation. So, uh, Joanna and Sarah Jean, who are talking, please check our website, cliffstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Clip Studio Paint channel, and Graphicsly. We are going to be uploading this webinar, and you can check all of the rest of our webinars, past webinars, because they are so interested and in different languages. So, um, also for more information about Sarah Jean, don't forget to follow her on her social media as the one with bear on Instagram, our station, Twitch, and Twitter. And with that. We want to close the webinar and thank you again, Sarah Jean. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Joanna. Thank you. Bye, and guys. Thank you, all the attendees, and see you in our next event. Bye. So, thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.